So when I was young, I have an uncle who is a draftsman and I love to watch him draw. And those were the days of set square drafting tables and rolling pens. And you know, he would draw all these beautiful lines on paper and I would be absolutely mesmerised. And when I was 12, my parents were renovating their house. And now thinking back, I think they're such cool parents because they gave me the total responsibility of managing the renovation. It was wonderful. So by then, I kind of knew that, you know, I'm really interested in, in this kind of work. You know, sustaining passion in architecture and design is the easiest thing. If you love it, it is, it's just part of what you do. It's like, you know, getting up in the morning, breathing, eating, and it's just being immersed in architecture. About two years ago, when she became CEO, a client of ours reminded me and said, wow, Francis, remember that about 12 years ago, you conveyed to me, watch that architect. And she said that now she is the CEO. Even at that very young age, 27 years ago, she seemed to have displayed this capability, this competency, this flexibility, this savviness. Eh? When the need comes to command and to rally a big group, I think she has the, the charm and the, what you call the X factor to have great stage presence. And I think that is essential in a leader. We have 1,300 people worldwide. In Singapore, we have close to um, 900 people. Singapore is quite small to sustain a firm of our size. And from the start, we knew that we had to go overseas. Right now, we have 17 offices from you know, uh, Shanghai in China all the way to uh, London and India and Indochina. And in all these uh, locations, um, our clients have continued to give us work because after you do a really good job, you know, uh, the relationship is built and they trust in you and they will give you more. In our work, in our line of um, design, communication is key and I have seen her so clearly communicating the most sophisticated, the most complex things. And that is a, one, of the, one of the sort of uh, capabilities that she has that I really admire. She will listen to you and she really uh, might not have a solution for you at that moment in time, but she will gather the strength of everybody to find a solution or suggestions later. Everyone is special. I, I see a lot of uh, uh, colleagues now that can be my children. I treat them as if they are my own child because if you do that, you know that um, their careers will need to be nurtured. They know that if there's any problem, they can come to me. So uh, yes, I, I, I lead by example by making sure that I'm accessible at all times. If I can resolve your problem in one hour and you don't have to suffer for five hours or the whole day, then I would have made your job a lot easier. I am a wife, I'm a mother and I'm also a daughter. I can't stay here the whole night because I've got to go home and take care of my babies. However, I will log on Skype and follow them from afar. So yes, my finger is always on the pulse, I'm always watching. I've known Angeline for close to 12 years and I think as a leader she's one that walks the talk. I remember there was this one occasion where we were working on RWS where the client called her like 3am in the morning to see whether she would come down and resolve some urgent problems on the site. And I don't think there was any hesitation on the site once she realised that it was important for her to be there. And I think the, the strength of Angeline is that she's very open to new ideas and she's always very curious. So she'll um, go from the most inexperienced you know, intern all the way up to the most experienced architect and she'll value all of their actual input. I've known her for 45 years. Oh my goodness, that's too long. Angie <laughs> cares about her friends and um, she bothers to spend time with us. She makes it a point to attend our annual holidays together. In the, these past few years, I have uh, volunteered in uh, many professional institutions. So Dover Park is quite different. When we had to increase our beds from 40 to 50, she actually helped us to uh, squeeze out GFA 
and uh, and uh, redesigned the whole third floor where we had our nurses' dormitories at that time, and and actually turned them into offices and, and meeting rooms, and then planned a new wing of wards so that we can put in extra ten beds. So she actually uh, did quite a lot, and, and these are all done pro bono. That is that's really essentially Angie. Um, I think she's always. Bothered, even though she's in this high position, or she's always bothered with uh, the feelings of other people, and uh, she doesn't always want to appear that you know she is this Angeline Chan <laughs> as much as, but she is. To sum it up, I would wish for all of you here to be as lucky as us, <laughs> to have an Angeline in your life. <laughs>